In the late 1970s, the UK and US governments decided that it wasn't their job to pick winners in business due to international competition. Instead, they began to support enterprise. Globally, small businesses are important. They're job creators, more efficient and innovative, and help larger businesses improve their own operations, making the economy work better overall. Today's SMEs could be tomorrow's corporate giants. Think of Facebook. Yet some grow and others don't. Why? Although some markets may be overcrowded with little growth and too much competition, it's the entrepreneur that's one of the main influences on growth. Some have a vision, driving them to succeed, helping them overcome adversity and obstacles. Some simply don't want to grow, preferring to maintain profitability and lifestyle. Others don't want to take on more debt for additional resources, while some lack skills such as selling, marketing or people management needed to grow the business. When the business starts up, the entrepreneur does most, if not all, the jobs. As it grows, more employees means the entrepreneur's roles change, creating procedures, ways of doing things, and information systems, ways of knowing things are done correctly, to deliver consistent customer value. Businesses often grow passively due to market momentum, but some entrepreneurs want to be active, seeking out strategies to simulate growth. To do this, they need to review the strengths and weaknesses of the business, researching what new opportunities exist, such as new markets, and the threats, such as potential new competitors. Next, how growth might be achieved has to be considered. Should it concentrate on its existing products or services? Should it expand into new, unknown markets, a riskier choice? Or should it diversify and introduce new products or services into a new market, the riskiest option? Growth can put a business under financial strain. Larger scales of profit don't always mean more cash. Many businesses fail because they have grown too quickly without organising the finance for the growth. Growth leads to higher stocks, which consume cash, more outstanding customer payments, debtors, and higher overheads. So the entrepreneur must consider all the financial implications of a growth strategy, prepare the business accordingly, and ensure the strategies exploit strengths. The strategy also needs to be acceptable to other stakeholders, such as employees, customers and banks, and consider any reaction they might have to the proposed changes in the business. The final stage is the implementation of the strategy. For this, should the business use its own resources or those of another organisation? Keeping it in-house allows growth at a controlled pace, but the entrepreneur could merge with or acquire other companies to fill gaps in skills or knowledge. Franchising could be the most financially effective route, or licensing products and services rather than investing in development. Implementation decisions are critical to the execution of the growth strategy. Growth is difficult and risky, so it's vital that each step in the growth process, business review, strategy selection, evaluation and implementation is followed carefully if ultimately success is to be achieved.